friends, thanks for stopping by today. My name is Becky and welcome to Kinda Shabby. I enjoy sharing all things DIY and decorating and if you enjoy those things too, please subscribe and tap the bell to receive all notifications. Today is a trash to treasure as we are going to be painting silver pieces that you can find at just about any thrift store. So if you're ready to get started, Join me in my craft room. So I picked up just a couple of different pieces of silver at my local Goodwill. I didn't pay more than a couple of bucks for each piece. This one here even used to have a lid attached to it and the hinge was broken off. So I did sand that down a little bit so I wouldn't cut myself when I was painting. Um, also, please don't be painting your dear Aunt Sally's silver that she gave you. I always look before I paint anything, I always look to check and see if it is something that would be valuable. So I'm not going to paint it. I'll just resell it as it is. So I'm going to take some paint here. This is Waverly in the color Plaster, one of my favorite colors. It is just a beautiful, soft, creamy color. Now what I've done is I've taken some paint because this is a brand new bottle I don't want to dip into the bottle and then paint because it might contaminate my paint so I just use just an old piece of tile as a palette the paint just washes right off when I'm finished now you want to make sure that your pieces are clean and lint free before you get started so that way the paint adheres better these little things here, I see them all the time. It's missing pieces. It's a chafing dish. It's supposed to have a piece that sets in here. Obviously it's missing. So stick around so you can see after we paint these, the fun thing that we're gonna do them to make risers out of them. So when you start painting, when you put your first coat on, it's gonna look like a mess. It is going to look like you've messed it up. If you've never painted anything with chalk paint before, I love working with chalk paint, but it can be a little daunting when you first decide to put that paint on something. It's a little scary, but just know that your first coat is going to look a little nasty. It's not going to look pretty. It's the second coat. Sometimes, depending on what you're painting, you may even need a third coat. But once you get that first coat on and you put the second coat on and then you do some distressing, if that's what you like, oh, you're going to love the way it looks. I'm going to continue painting, working my way around the piece. I'm applying a nice thin layer and smoothing out brush strokes as best as I can to evenly distribute the paint. I'm not trying to have complete opaque coverage with the first coat. I'm going to let that dry and start working on my other pieces. Then when the outside part of that dries, then I can grab a hold of it and turn it around and paint the inside of those legs. I missed you right there, little foot. Let me paint that little foot. See, did I miss the, I did, I missed that side of that little foot. What in the world? When I wet distress this, this is going to be so beautiful. missing these feet. What is wrong with me today? Come on now. It's much easier to smooth out brush marks on larger pieces using continuous strokes from bottom to top. Using a stippling motion helps to get paint into the details of the handle. That looks pretty good. Smooth out those strokes around the edges there. And we'll let these dry and they're already looking so much better that looks already. Oh, I love it. So pretty. And let me see, is that dry? Nope. I just touched it. It ain't dry enough yet. My husband cut out these little round pieces for me. It's just birch plywood. 
that he picked up at uh, either Lowe's or Home Depot. And so I told him I wanted these to go on that to make a riser. So I'm getting ready to stain these. And the stain that I like to use, it is the Craft Smart. And this is actually like a, a gel stain. This stuff is odor free. It goes on really well. And you can use it indoors. You're not going to have the family going, what are you doing in here? It stinks. I still like to use gloves because I don't like getting it all over me. So I'll be staining those in just a second. I pour out a little bit of the stain in a cup because I don't want to use it, contaminate, dipping back and forth. I also keep just a little mason jar with some soapy water in it. So as soon as I am finished staining these, I am going to put this brush in this soapy water and let it soak for a little bit because I don't want the stain staining the bristles of my brush. I do like to do the edges first. Then I can just go back over the top and make nice smooth edges so there's not a ridge of stain on the top of the board. go put my laundry away while all this stuff is drying. I'll see you guys in a minute. So you can see that the first coat did not cover completely. So we are going to be giving these a second coat. On to round two. I'm going to probably put flowers or something of that sort in there. So I'm not going to paint the inside. I'm going to leave it just like it is. Now we are ready for the fun part. I just take an old damp rag and we are now going to just rub over these areas where we want to pull off some of the paint to bring out those details. Okay, so I've got it started. You can see how that's going to look. Just begin to pull the paint off the high points of that design. I don't want to take all the paint off. I could also use sandpaper if I wanted to, but this is metal and I don't want to scratch the metal. Don't want to scratch the silver. That is looking so good. I love that shabby look, y'all. And I can take off as much or as little as I want. That just brings that to life. Look how pretty. I used the same wet distressing method to give an aged, weathered look to each of the pieces. So now, it's time for us to put the tops on to our silver. Now that I've centered that up, I'm just gonna take a Sharpie and just kind of go around the edge of that. So when I go to glue it down, I know that I've got it in the right spot. And I'm going to be using some E6000 uh, I thought I was. Give me a second. <laughs> Can't get it open. Obviously, it glued itself shut. All right, come on. Come on. There we go. All right. So, I'm going to put some E6000 all around this area here. Then I'm also going to put some hot glue on as well to the top of the silver piece so that way I know I've got good adhesion. The E6000 doesn't dry immediately. It takes a couple of hours, but the hot glue is pretty instantaneous. So that way 
I know that I'm going to be able to glue it down and it's going to hold until the E6000 sets up. So I'm going to put this on the outside here. Just all around that lip on the painted silver piece. And center that. And the glue is actually pretty forgiving. So I just want to kind of move it around there. Make sure I've got glue everywhere that I want it. And I'm just going to set this aside and let it let that glue set up. I'm going to do the same thing for this. To me, it's easier to see if it's in the middle if I do it from the bottom. If I tried to do it from the top like this, I can't see all of the legs at the same time, but if I turn it over, I can. And now while that is setting up, I am going to be applying wax to the pieces. I'll be applying wax to all the pieces, but since I have to wait for those to dry, I'm going to go ahead and wax this one. After I did the wet distressing, I did go back over it. That way there was no dust left on there. Now to wax this, I'm just using the Annie Sloan Clear Wax. And I have had this tin for years. This stuff is just so good. I like it and you only need just a little bit. So what I like to do is dip my brush in, take the lid and work the wax into the bristles. So that way when I apply it, I, it's not gonna be just a blob on the item. Then I take it off just a little bit and you're just gonna apply it in a circular motion. And because this is clear wax, you're really not gonna be able to see this, but when I touch it, I can feel that it has a very silky texture to it. So I'm just gonna go ahead and keep waxing my piece here. Once I've covered the whole piece, then I'm gonna go back and buff it off with this soft cloth. Well, not this one, but a clean one. I love the silky texture that the wax gives to the painted pieces. And it's also going to offer protection on the piece as well. And I'm just gonna take my hand and just touch to see if I can feel any piece that I may have missed, if I missed a spot with the wax. Yeah, right there. So I'm just gonna take these shop rags, and these are just blue, lint-free shop rags. I don't remember if I get these at Lowe's or Home Depot, but they're very easy to use better than paper towels, lint-free, and it just really helps to give it a nice, soft finish. And anywhere that I feel like it's really sticky, because you want it to be smooth when you apply that, and after you buff it, if it still feels sticky, then you've applied just a little too much wax and you need to go back over that spot. Just a nice, smooth finish that is so pretty. And when I get this staged up so you can see, it's gonna look so nice. I didn't like the raw edge here and I want to cover up some of that glue. So I am going to be taking just a small brush and filling in around those edges. There's enough in the lid because I did shake it up and you do want to make sure that it's uh, well shaken before you use it because it kind of separates when it's left sitting for a while. And 
that's also going to help cover up some of the glue. This is so pretty though, my goodness. I'm going to let this dry and then I will wax the entire surface of both of these items just like I did when I waxed the tea cap. These pieces have gone from broken and dusty discards in a box at Goodwill to beautiful, useful pieces perfectly styled for a springtime vignette. Accented with florals, candles, and doilies, the elegant transformation is complete. Come back next week as our springtime crafting continues. Thank you so much for spending your time with me today. Please remember to subscribe and also to share with others who enjoy shabby chic crafts like this one. And until next time, my friends, be blessed.